On today's episode of Locked On Stars, we are continuing talking about the offseason for the Dallas Stars as it pertains to the big picture in the NHL. And on today's episode, we will be talking about some of the biggest free agent names on the market this coming offseason. And we're going to talk about whether or not they would be good fits in Dallas and if it's even possible for them to be Dallas Stars come next season. We'll talk about Philip Forsberg, Johnny Gaudreau, and Nazem Kadri on today's episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked on Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, credentialed member of the Dallas Stars media, coming to you on this Tuesday, June 7th. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, Thank you for stopping by today's episode of Locked on Stars and for making us your first listen every single day. Be sure to subscribe to our show. If you do not do so already, you can do that on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. We are free and available no matter where you listen or how you listen. And uh, Truly are glad that you chose to listen to today's episode. Uh, and we're talking about some of the biggest free agent names and we spent some time last week talking about some pieces that the Dallas Stars could potentially trade for to add to their roster and now today I want to shift the focus to some guys that could be in new cities uh, at the start of this next coming season or maybe they will be re-signed by their current teams Uh, one of these guys that we're talking about still currently playing technically in the NHL playoffs even though his season is over uh, due to an unfortunate injury his team still has a chance to win the Stanley Cup trophy here in the next few weeks. But nonetheless, still some guys that are really interesting to think about the potential of them becoming Dallas Stars because this isn't something like a trade where you have to take into consideration you know, division rivalries or even being in the same conference. This is totally up to the player whether or not they want to walk and leave their current team and go somewhere else, whether that is within the same conference division or it could be to an entirely different conference and all three of these guys we're talking about today are in the western conference and two of them do play in the central division starting off with philip forsberg 27 years old currently a nashville predator if you want to be technical with it but he is set to become a free agent this summer this was one of the biggest names around the trade deadline a lot of speculation that philip forsberg might get moved to a different team before the deadline hit, but Nashville held on to him. But there is still a lot of speculation that he would not be a Nashville Predator past this season. And the Predator season has been over for quite some time now as they were defeated by the Colorado Avalanche in the first round of the playoffs without uh, UC Saros, Philip Forsberg, Roman Yossi, uh, and the talent that they have on that roster, not enough to overcome a really, really talented and powerful Colorado Avalanche team. But Philip Forsberg, despite that, had his best season of his career. 42 goals, 42 assists, totaling 84 points in only 69 games played. So, I mean, those are incredible stats for any player. And he didn't even play every single game that he could have this season. He was a huge reason for the Nashville Predators' success, the reason that they made the playoffs, the reason that they remained competitive in an incredibly difficult central division and that was a gauntlet of a division all year long and what was a gauntlet of a western conference the western conference playoff picture seemingly changing every single day after the all-star break and a huge reason why the predators stayed so consistent was the play of uc saros the play of roman yossi and i think the play of philip forsberg and it was really really convenient for the predators while they had him because he was only making six million dollars a season which isn't dirt cheap but that isn't max contract money either so it was a pretty good bargain the production they were getting from Forsberg during his time in Nashville especially this past season when he had 82 points in only 69 games played so he's one of those guys that if Dallas is truly serious about getting better offensively over the summer that they should heavily consider going after a guy 
like Philip Forsberg because he brings that veteran presence at age 27 where he still is young enough to make some big plays and be an effective scorer, but he's not a, a younger guy that still needs you know a few years to get you know, up on his feet and get a few more years under his belt. Philip Forsberg is officially an NHL veteran, but still able to produce at an extremely high level as we saw this past season. I mean, he scored over 40 goals. He would be an incredible offensive talent to add to a second line. I mean, that's one of the nice things about talking about the Dallas Stars potentially upgrading offensively this offseason is you already have a really good top line, a top 10 top line in the NHL, if you ask me. And then pretty much any other really good player you could throw in on a second line. And I think that a guy like Forsberg could play really effective second line minutes on the left wing with Tyler Sagan at the center. And then maybe you find someone like Denis Kurianov to take that right wing position. And I think you could have a really interesting and really fun to watch Dallas Stars second line that could provide some fantastic secondary scoring for this team. But the, the hindrance here is, of course, would the Dallas Stars be willing to spend a big amount of money or a large amount of money to add Forsberg to the roster? That's really the hesitancy here with the Nashville Predators is do you want to spend all this money for a guy that is arguably maybe still in his prime? And if he's in the prime of his career, he's at the end of it. I mean, approaching 30 years old, getting older, obviously still a, a incredibly fantastically talented player. But is he a guy that the Predators want to sign to a big long-term deal uh, that could potentially jeopardize their future as far as signing prospects or even really talented young players on their roster who might be better to spend that big money on long term. Uh, it's one of those questions that Nashville is having to ask, and it's a question that many other teams in the NHL that want Forsberg on their team would have to ask as well. So he will likely want big money. I don't think it's going to be one of those things where he's willing to take a pay cut to sign with another team, whether it is Nashville or it is with another team. NHL organization and it's it, as much as I would love to have Philip Forsberg on the team I don't really see it happening with the Dallas Stars I can envision him on a second line with Tyler Sagan all I want I think that would be a really good connection I think they could build some excellent chemistry with one another especially if they you know got started early even before training camp getting to know one another building that relationship early on as I'm sure they already are familiar with each other playing in the same division for as long as as they have, but then actually becoming teammates and becoming friends. And then, of course, that carries over into training camp, into practices. I think that could be a really fun duo to watch, but I don't see it happening purely because of the money. I don't think he would take a big pay cut to join a roster like Dallas has. I mean, Dallas's roster is really talented. It's pretty good, but it's not quite as enticing as any other some other rosters in the league that might be more Stanley Cup prepared or Stanley Cup ready. Uh, I think that, you know, Phil, if he's going to take a pay cut, it would be for a more talented team, maybe a better team or an organization, maybe in a little bit of a more normal state. I mean, the Dallas Stars still without a new head coach. Who knows when we will be getting an announcement on that? So I don't really envision it happening. I can fantasize about it all I want. Maybe I could be wrong. I would love to be wrong about this, but I think Philip Forsberg is going to cost too much money for the Dallas Stars, despite him potentially being one of the better fits in this free agent class for this current Dallas Stars roster. Well, coming up next, we're going to take a look at another guy out of the Central Division who I think could be an interesting fit on the Stars, but he's gone through some pretty big changes here in the past few days that could hinder his popularity on the free agent market. We'll talk about Nazem Kadri after a quick break. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. Don't you love a chewy chocolate brownie or a caramel brownie with caramel swirled on top? Doesn't that just sound absolutely delicious? Well, what if I told you that you can have all that chewy chocolatey deliciousness plus 17 grams of protein? Well, you're in luck because caramel brownie bars are available at Built.com right now and you got to act fast because they are a fan favorite forget about dessert these are better than dessert plus the macros are unreal 130 calories 17 grams of protein and only four grams of sugar i would replace a regular brownie with built's caramel brownie bar in a heartbeat and the best part caramel brownies are covered in 100 percent real chocolate 
So with Built Bar, you don't have to sacrifice tasty for healthy. You can have both. You can go to Built.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order at Built.com. Hey, Stars fans, we have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On Podcast. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long and everyone that completes the survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Thank you guys for your help. And now let's get back to today's episode. Moving on on this Tuesday episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for stopping by and making us your first listen of the day. This is your host, Dane Lewis, at Dane double underscore Lewis on Twitter. You can also find me, uh, or our show rather, on Twitter as well, at Locked on Stars. Thank you guys for the continued support of the show. Your follows, your subscriptions truly does mean a lot to me as I continue to produce this show throughout the offseason. We will be here making episodes every single week up until training camp until next thing you know the 2022-2023 season will be here and it will be an exciting time and it's still an exciting time in the NHL world as the Colorado Avalanche have clinched their spot in the Stanley Cup finals they are now awaiting the winner of the New York Rangers Tampa Bay Lightning series game four of that game tonight Lightning looking to even things up two to two the Rangers looking to take a commanding three one lead but speaking of the Colorado Avalanche they are a team that will be in an interesting position this summer whether they win the cup or not they will have 12 free agents to deal with 10 of those being unrestricted free agents and one of those guys is Nazem Kadri the next guy I want to discuss on today's episode as far as free agents that the Dallas Stars could potentially pursue for this coming season and the Colorado Avalanche I think will look very different at the start of next season, just with the amount of free agents on this team, especially if they do win the Stanley Cup. I mean, a lot of these guys may be a little bit older, maybe on the brink of retirement, or they'll be happy that they got their championship, happy that they got their ring, and then they'll go move on somewhere else to maybe get a bigger paycheck, more money, because the Colorado Avalanche will want to sign some big deals for their guys, uh, the, the really key guys on this team, and they've already done so for some of the other key guys on the team, like Kale McCarr, but one of the biggest questions for this Colorado Avalanche organization going into this offseason has to be Nazem Kadri, who he himself has a ton of questions attached to his name. I mentioned at the end of the last segment that he's kind of gone through uh, quite a bit over the past couple of days. He recently had thumb surgery after a pretty dirty and uncalled for hit into the boards by Evander Kane in the Western Conference Finals that has pretty much ended Nazem Kadri's season. A lot of reports indicating that he will not return to the Colorado Avalanche lineup for the remainder of the season, including the Stanley Cup Finals. And with that, I mean, it's it's on paper, a thumb injury or thumb surgery maybe doesn't sound as severe as some other injuries or surgeries we see in the sport of hockey, but it's one of those things that I think, you know, hockey's such a, a sport that's established on habit and guys have their habits that they do before games and during games, but it even comes down to just the little things, the way they handle the stick, the way they handle the puck, the way they shoot. And I think your hand and your thumb play a huge role in that. And it's one of those things that you maybe don't think about until something like this happens. So something that teams will have to keep in mind about Kadri in this off season with this surgery on his thumb, he is over 30. He is currently 31 years old. He will turn 32, I believe in October. And another big question is, was this past season just an anomaly for Nazem Kadri, 28 goals, 59 assists, 87 points in total. He was one of the biggest storylines this season as far as kind of a breakout player who has been in the league for quite some time. Kadri was always a good player with the Toronto Maple Leafs. He was always consistent, always putting up pretty decent numbers, and even his first couple of seasons in Colorado, a really solid player, really nice role kind of guy. But then this season, he just absolutely exploded and became a, a star on a team that was already filled with a ton of superstars and a ton of big, high-caliber names like Kale McCarr, like Nathan McKinnon, Miko Rantanen, 
Gabriel Landeskog, and even with Aturi Lekkinen coming in from the Montreal Canadiens at the trade deadline. I mean, just tons and tons of offensive firepower. And Nazem Kadri inserted himself into that position as well. And just even though he won't get to play in the Stanley Cup finals, he's been an integral part of this Avs run to the Stanley Cup. And I think they will miss him dearly going up against either Igor Shosturkin or Andre Vasilevsky. I think that the Avalanche got off very easy having to go against Mike Smith in the Western Conference Finals. Probably, I would say, the worst goalie they could have played of the teams in the Western Conference playoff field. Um, it, so just, I, I think that's going to be interesting to watch with all the rest that they're about to get watching this Eastern Conference Finals that could go to six or seven games. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting beside myself, but I do think the Avs will miss Nazem Kadri in the Stanley Cup Finals, even though they still have tons of offensive firepower. Kadri just brings a whole new dynamic to the way that they prepare themselves for games. And Kadri, another guy similar to Philip Forsberg, was making a, an interesting amount of money, and that was kind of at a bargain for his respective team, only making $4.5 million this past season. And I don't know how much he'll be worth this offseason, especially with the thumb surgery. I think it's one of those things where Kadri would probably want to ask for a pretty big deal, either from the Avalanche, which could be pretty far-fetched, or even another organization. It would just depend on where he wants to go. And it really just also comes down to his injury. How much will a thumb surgery affect the rest of his career? Again, you might not think it would affect him that much, but it could be something that could be a bigger deal than any of us could possibly imagine. So that's something that we'll kind of have to pay attention to. And I'm sure several teams and their front offices and their coaching staffs will be paying attention to as well as this offseason unfolds. But he's another guy that I think could be a really interesting fit in the middle six for the Dallas Stars. The really only hesitancy I have for a guy like Nazem Kadri is he does play the center position quite a bit. And the Dallas Stars seem to be in a pretty good spot as far as their centermen go with Rope Hintz, with Tyler Sagan, with Luke Glendening, and even Roddick Fox. And when you look at a guy that could play on the checking line, that's kind of been Roddick Fox's role for the past several seasons. So I don't really know if Nazem Kadri would be on the top of the list for the Dallas Stars as far as guys that they would want to pursue and add to the roster simply because there's already a ton of talented centermen on this team. Luke Glendening was everything the Stars wanted and more when they signed him last offseason, so it would just be really difficult to find a spot for Kadri on this roster, despite the fact that he has been an incredible offensive talent for this Avs team the past year. I think he could be an interesting fit, but I don't think he'll be a guy that is highly sought after by the Dallas Stars, but we'll keep an eye on it because who knows how many other teams could have been interested in him but might fall off the Kadri hype train now with this, this thumb surgery. Well, coming up next, we will finish out today's episode talking about another guy out of the Western Conference, a guy that the Dallas Stars are quite familiar with as he ended their season. We'll talk about the potential of Johnny Gaudreau in Victory Green after a quick break. And we're closing out today's episode of Locked on Stars, talking about our final free agent prospect of the day that could potentially find their way to Dallas this offseason. You heard me tease it at the end of last segment. It is Johnny Gaudreau. And this is a guy about a month ago that I would not have wanted to talk about. But the fact of the matter is, as much as I despised the Calgary Flames for about two weeks, Johnny Hockey is a great, great hockey player. I mean, he's 28 years old, but still had his best season to date. 150 points, uh, 115 points. I almost mispronounced that. He did not score 150 points. That would be an entirely different conversation, but 40 goals this past season uh, and Calgary finds themselves in a similar situation to Colorado. 11 free agents on the roster this summer, nine of them being UFAs. And there's quite a few big names on that list of free agents coming this summer, you have Johnny Gaudreau, you have Matthew Kachuk, Andrew Mangiapane, and a few other guys as well that played some pretty big roles for this Flames team this season and even in the playoffs. So this is another team similar to the Avs, the Flames, that I think will look very, very different next season when things get rolling. And Johnny Gaudreau was making just under $6.8 million last season. He's been in a great, great offensive talent in the NHL for the past several seasons, despite being undersized by NHL standards, still finding a way to be effective. His speed is one of his speed is 
obviously a huge part of his game, and he's one of the fastest guys in the league because of his size, and he uses that to enter the zone with a ton of effectiveness. And then, of course, he has a really, really nice shot as well and plays pretty well with his line mates in Kachuk and Lindholm. And now there's a potential that two of those guys could be gone from this Flames organization this summer. And, you know, the Flames, it's just for them, it's a question of, is Johnny Gaudreau still the guy that we trust to take us to the promised land to bring Lord Stanley to Calgary. I mean, he is 28 years old, so he's not really out of his prime. But again, he's similar to Philip Forsberg, where he could be getting near the end of his prime. I mean, you just have to take into account, you know, his size and factor that into the way that he will age. I think that's one of the bigger hesitancies for either Calgary or any other team that would be interested in Johnny Gaudreau this offseason and in the future. I think that his size makes him a little bit more susceptible to injuries as he continues to age just because hits are going to you know impact him a lot harder as he continues to grow older and his body starts to break down a little bit that's not me attacking him as a hockey player or an athlete that is just a matter of fact something that i can easily foresee happening and we see it across other sports as well some of these smaller guys as athletic and as dazzling as they can be sometimes have their careers cut short due to an unfortunate amount of injury. So that's something that many teams will have to consider this offseason when considering going after Johnny Gaudreau for their team. But as far as a fit in Dallas, I think that he could be another really, really fun guy to watch on the second line. Playing on that wing position with Tyler Sagan, we saw how Tyler Sagan paired up with a speedy big guy like Dennis Gurionov this past season. I think if you combine Gurionovs and, uh, excuse me, not Kachuk, but, Gaudreau's speed on the same line with the veteran presence of Tyler Sagan. I think that could be another really effective second line that could actually produce quite a bit of scoring for the Dallas Stars to help give some backup to that hence Robertson Pavelski line and something that the Stars would desperately need. And of the three guys, I can see, I don't think you know it's a lock or a guarantee, but I think Johnny Gaudreau would be the most likely guy to sign out of either him, Kadri, or Philip Forsberg because he's another guy that who knows how much money that he'll be seeking or how much money he could realistically make. But I just don't know if the Calgary Flames are going to look to shell out all this money to a guy that has been good for them, but you know they still haven't really had too much success as far as almost getting to the Stanley Cup Finals. I mean, they dealt with the Dallas Stars, but still got taken to seven games, got taken to overtime, and it just took eventually a, a tiny, tiny hole for the puck to go through past Jake Ottinger for the Flames to win that series. Goudreau did score that goal, but then he and the Flames were kind of held as irrelevant against the Edmonton Oilers, and we saw that maybe the Oilers weren't all they were cracked up to be against the Colorado Avalanche. And, and so it's one of those things where it's you, you know you were shut down by Jake Ottinger in round one, but still won in seven games. But then you lose in what was it five games to Mike Smith? I mean, Mike Smith's not a better goalie than Jake Ottinger. I don't think anyone could make that argument, and if someone did, uh, they would likely be lying. So. Is Calgary looking to Johnny Gaudreau to continue to be the future of this franchise? Will they continue to trust him, or will they allow him to walk? And if so, what teams would be interested in trying to add a guy like Gaudreau to their teams? Because I think he could be a really good piece if he doesn't have to be the key guy for a team. And I think that's a great opportunity for him in Dallas because he wouldn't have to be the number one option. You have all the number one options on the top line, and he could come in and play that secondary scoring role, I think, really perfectly. I mean, can you imagine having a 40-goal score, 115-point score on your second line, still getting a lot of minutes, still getting a ton of play time, and still being an effective weapon for his respective team? I think he would be the best fit for the Dallas Stars of the three guys that we talked about today. The reality of it happening, I don't know how big that is. There's going to be a ton of other teams that would want to pursue him if Calgary does not re-sign him. So we'll have to keep an eye on that this offseason, but I'm really excited to see what happened to Johnny Gaudreau this offseason. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for stopping by and making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen of the day, check out the Locked on NHL podcast. They are covering each and every day of the week talking about the NHL playoffs as we get closer and closer to the Stanley Cup Finals. They are free and available wherever you get your podcast at, just like the Locked on Stars podcast. Be sure to subscribe to and follow our show if you do not do so already. You can also find and follow me on Twitter at Dane Double underscore Lewis and our show on Twitter as well at Locked on Stars. 
Be sure to tune in tomorrow for more Dallas Stars offseason content. We'll see you there, Stars fans. Have a great Tuesday.